gracious Heavenly Father, as we come before you tonight, we just want to thank you for these 31 years that uh, the Edelweiss Seniors was able to journey with you. What you've done through them. And Lord, we can surely say, surely goodness and mercies, your mercies has followed them all of these 31 years. Father, Lord God, we just want to give you all the praise and all the thanksgiving. And Lord, tonight we want to claim your promises as you say that you will dwell in the praises of your people. And as the songs are sang, in praise of you, Lord, and who you are and what you have done. Father, Lord God, we pray that your presence will be in our midst. Your presence will be felt by each one here. And Lord, you will hear your voice, they will hear your voice speaking to each one of us. Lord, you know our needs. Lord, no one can touch the heart like you do. And Father, Lord God, we pray that the Holy Spirit will move in our midst tonight. And Lord, for the sake of Jesus Christ and what he has done in each one of our lives. And this we pray in Christ's precious name. Amen. You may now be seated. Let us warmly welcome another church elder, Elder Ernesto Tanchi, for the opening remarks. Uh, good evening, everyone here. Uh, we thank God for this uh, amazing grace. Because uh, yesterday, as you know, we had Super Mario swamp and all out Metro Manila and everywhere. Uh, last night, we heard that uh, in Manila, the water already had receded. But in our house, outside the road, it was about 11 o'clock before the water started receding. So I told Molly, by this morning, Saturday, we will know if uh, the Edelside cancer will go on or not. And so last night, I was kind of, we were kind of praying. And early this morning, when I woke up, oh, I said, good, good, good. The water had already receded. So our Lord is uh, wonderful. Let's uh, clap our hands and give him a thank of the Lord. Uh, many of you already know what the Elusai Singers uh, is about, how it started. But since we have a lot of guests from other churches, especially our uh, pastor, Reverend David Ko Chin Hua, he invited many of his uh, friends from uh, QC uh, EC, right, to come here. And so we uh, we like to explain a little bit what the Elusai is about. Now the word Elusai comes from the name of a warrior. In First Chronicles chapter 3, verse 3, it lists the warriors, the three mighty warriors, the 30 warriors, and all the mighty men who joined David when he was escaping from Saul. And so one of the name of the warrior is Elusai. And the word means God is my strength. Now in 1983, there was a group of uh, young uh, people who sang at a summer conference in Baguio City. Now after they sang, uh, many of the other brothers and sisters told them, wow, you have a very good uh, singing group. You should continue singing. And that's how the Elusai uh, ministry was organized. Now, four years after that, Susan Lim became their directress. Now, Susan Lim was uh, educated and she took up church music in a Westminster Choir Church, uh, Westminster Choir Church in uh, Princeton, New Jersey. And so, with her experience and with her uh, familiarity with many kinds of songs, when she came back to the Philippines, she started mentoring the Elusai members. Now she was very faithful, tireless, and uh, spent so much time teaching the Elusai members to sing. The purpose of the Elusai is to praise the Lord and to share the gospel. So they have been to Southern Mindanao, Northern Mindanao, uh, Southern Luzon, Northern Luzon, uh, especially to the places where our missionaries have been serving the Lord. And uh, among the Elusai members, you will find a lot of professionals. For example, 
are powerful bankers. If you want to borrow money, you can go to them. We have doctors. If you are sick, you can go to them. We also have a professional educators. If your children need to go to a good Chinese school, you can you can request some of the principal who are in the Eruzai. Right? Perhaps he might give you a space. Uh, you might also want to uh, see some of the other professionals uh, who are, example, uh, lawyers. Uh, there are also brokers in case you are not able to bring your goods and they are stuck in uh, South Harbor. So the Eruzai has all kinds of members and uh, all of them have one thing in common. You know, they love the Lord and they are willing to spend time to practice. Now I observed and I noticed that in the last few weeks, they sometimes practice up to 12 midnight. And so, for example, my wife plays the piano for them. And usually they come home about 10.30. But the last few weeks, they were coming home past 12. I was wondering, you know, what's happening? Uh, kidnap? Uh, fortunately, they all came home safely. So all the singers have devoted a lot of their time to practice. Now tonight, this is what you can expect. Uh, these people are not what you would call a paid professional singer. Okay, they are professionals who love the Lord. So their main objective is to serve God. So their main objective is not to earn money, it is to praise the Lord. And so tonight as we listen to their songs, for some of you who are members uh, who have already received Christ as their Lord and Savior, uh, you can easily relate to the songs of praise, the songs uh, talking about Jesus. But for some of those who have not yet accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, you know, I would specially ask you to pay attention to the songs and the words. Because the objective of all the songs is to first say that God is really great. And our God is such a great God that He really deserves to be praised. And then it will sing about Jesus, the only hope, the amazing grace of God, where He is willing to sacrifice His only Son, you know, to die for us. So some of us who have not yet known Christ, who are maybe lonely, who face so all kinds of questions, who ask God, why? If there is a God, why do I have this kind of problem? Why is there suffering? Many, many kinds of questions. Well, tonight, at least, an answer will be offered to you. Uh, if you have not yet known Christ, it is really our fervent prayer that you will give God a chance to know Him, to know the plan of salvation. Because in this world, there is really only one way. There is only one way to heaven. Only one way to have eternal life. And that is through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so tonight, we would like all of you to just sit down, relax, enjoy the music, and have a good time. Thank you. Thank you, Um Before we actually open the, the, the time to the Eluzai singers, why don't we all stand up and praise the Lord through our songs and through our worship as we sing our first song, I'm Trading My Sorrows. Let's put our hands together and worship the Lord. Yeah. 
Lord, we thank you, Father Lord, truly you are the only one who is worthy of our praise, of our worship, our devotions, our meditations. Father, you are worthy, truly, there is none like you. Father, as we prepare our hearts before your wonderful message that you would be speaking through the yellow eye singers, we ask, Father, may we continue to open our hearts to fully receive whatever it is that you want us to, to, to know this evening. Lord, as we continue to worship you, continue to praise your name, Lord, we acknowledge that truly you are worthy.
go by. We experience a lot of hardships, crimes, earthquakes, typhoons, floods, financial crisis, health problems, family problems, and many more. Sometimes you feel that we cannot handle all of it. The pressure is too much. All hope is lost. We often ask ourselves if it is God's will that we are suffering. Well, that is how Peter felt before. I really had a hard time with that math exam. Really, babe? You should have told me. I could have helped you with exam if you were having a hard time. You want to help me? But you're always with that Peter. I sometimes feel that you don't even have time for me anymore. Babe, I do hope you understand. Peter is my best friend, and sometimes I just can't hey, say no. Hey, Jerry. Hey, Peter. Oh, I'm Grace. Can I borrow your honey pie just for a second? Do I have a choice? Hey, why don't we play basketball tonight with the guys? You and me, the other ones. We're the best team. Say, pick me up at seven. Ooh, basketball. I might have to take a pass on that, bro. Grace isn't feeling well today with her math exam at all. Math exam? Come on. You're always with her anyways. She'll understand. Let's do it. I know. I have a great idea. Tonight, we have a Bible study at my place. And you can come and join us. Here, I have something for you. What is this? It's a Bible. What am I going to do with this? For you to know more about Jesus. Oh, come on. Don't start to like Jesus again. You know I don't believe in that stuff, and I never will. But, don't you remember, ever since we were kids, we always go to Sunday school together. I know that, but how many times do I have to tell you that I only go to that Sunday school is for the free snacks, the mahons, the orange juice, and of course, the pretty girls in our class. Everything else is just plain boring. You're the only one who's interested in those things. But everything said about Jesus is good. Good? For you, maybe. Your family is rich. You live in a big house. You have your own car. And you'll graduate soon upon laude. And those multinational companies are lining up your doorstep. Your future is made, Jerry. You have any reason not to believe in this Jesus of yours? <laughs> And me, huh? Even though I studied late into the night, I could not possibly get the grades you've been getting. And your God knows, I really need good grades, so at least when we graduate, we can get a nice paying job and help with expenses at home. But what about your dad? What is he doing? He's gone. Wait, what? What do you mean he's gone? He's gone. He left us last night. You know, I'm glad that good-for-nothing drunkard is gone. You know what? All he does is ask mom for money and then goes out and gets drunk. And worst of all, when he comes home, he beats up me and he beats up mom. You know, these are just some of the few things I question your God about. If he really loves me, like you said, why am I so poor, huh? Why did he allow so much pain and suffering in our family? You love me? He loves me? You answer me. Just as I thought. Just see you around. They keep their very good way. Babe, did you fight again? I don't know, babe. Peter and I are best friends. We talk about almost everything. But whenever we talk about Jesus, we end up fighting. Sometimes, I just feel like giving up. Babe, don't give up. Remember when we were still friends? You used to share Jesus to me. I often laughed at you, but life didn't stop you. 
and if not for persistence, I don't think I would have accepted Jesus. So don't worry, okay? And let's just pray for Peter. I'm sure God will work for you as well. Come on, let's grab some coffee. My shoes. Wow, thanks.
your best friend. And we left something the last time we met. You don't look well. Are you okay? I don't know. I've been having this bad pains for weeks now. I don't know what's happening to me. Bad pains. I think we should have that check. No, it's okay. It's probably just because of studying late night or some arthritis or something. But that might be serious. Come on. You know, having a check means money. Where will I get the money to have it checked? Don't worry about the expenses. I got your back. It's okay. You've done so much for me already. You look happy. What's up? Well, you see, I got this phone call earlier from a big company in Manhattan. They found out that I'm going to be graduating soon up in Laude. And right after we graduate, they want to hire me. And guess what? Guess how much they're offering? 25000 From a big company? Come on. 50000 Still small. But just tell me already. 80,000 pesos. 80,000? Wow. You're such a lucky guy. Your God must really love you, huh? I wish I can get that kind of job when you graduate also. With 80,000, I can buy your car. And I'll treat you to the buffet. You can eat. Ow. Ah. Are you okay, here? Are you okay? Ow. Oh. Someone help! Oh. Someone! Ah! Oh. Together with some students, Jerry brought Peter to the ER. The doctors diagnosed Peter with kidney failure and stressed his need for an operation. What happened? Peter and I were just talking and he suddenly felt a pain in his back. So what did the doctor say? The doctor said, don't get that. Doc, how's Peter? Peter is in critical condition right now. His kidneys fail severely, and we need to operate on him as soon as possible. But the problem is, we do not have a donor. And I'm not sure if Peter can wait that long. I'll go ahead. That reminds me, I have to make that phone call. No, that will do it, Kate. There's no reception here. I'll just go outside, okay? Why did it have to be Peter? Why did it have to be my best friend? He's now in a critical condition. I don't know what to do. You are the only one I can turn to. Please. Please show me what to do.
Why would God allow such a thing to happen? By putting all his questions aside, Jerry chose to help his best friend. Much to the distress of Grace, by donating his kidney, despite the risks. The operation turned out to be a success, and Peter was transferred to the recovery room. Grace and Peter's mom, anxious of the outcome, were waiting at the hallway.
not get to talk to you for the longest time. It was just too painful for me to carry past away. To tell you the truth, you are one of the persons I blame for his passing. But then I realized that God has his plans for us. And he had his plan for Jerry and for you. I hope you realize that Peter really cared about you. In fact, one of his final wishes before being wheeled into the operating room was that you would accept Jesus into your life as your Savior and Lord.
know, the Bible says, there is no greater love than this, that a man would lay down his life for his friends. Nothing, nothing can compare to what Jesus sacrificed for us to pay the price for our sins. It is our hope that you would also make that decision like Peter did, to accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior and entrust our lives fully to Him so that on that one great day, we will all see each other in heaven. Christ 
die for us. You know, this verse makes very clear to us that all of us are sinners. But then what does it mean to be a sinner? To be a sinner means to miss the standard that God has set. It's sort of like taking a test in school. You know, I remember one of my goals when I was in elementary and high school is simply don't fail. And so, we all know that the passing grade is 75. And so as long as you score 75 or upward, you're good. But then think about this. The passing grade is 75. If you only got 65, what does that say? You fail. If you got 70, you fail. If you got 74, you still fail. So no matter how close you may be to the passing grade, you will still fail the exam if you don't score 75. Now God's standard is much different. God's standard is not getting 75 out of 100. But instead, God's standard is complete or perfect holiness. It means that for a person to be acceptable in His presence, you have to be 100% sinless. And I tell you, none of us here this evening can ever claim to be totally sinless. It's true, you probably never killed anyone. You probably never robbed a bank. You probably never did some heinous crime against someone. But think about this. Have you ever spoken words of lies against others? Have you cheated during exam time? Probably you've spoken ill, you've slandered people, you've talked behind their backs. Or probably you've dishonored your parents. Like, you probably disagreed with them. And because of your disagreement, you talk back at them. You don't want to follow their rules. You see, all of these are sins. And here's the thing. All it takes is to commit just one sin. And we miss God's standards. Romans 6.23 tells us that the wages of sin is death. When we sin against God, the consequence is none other than death. And this death has three aspects. The first is that it is a spiritual death. As sinners, we are separated from God and from His wonderful plan for us, from the life that He wants to give to us. That is what we call a spiritual death, to miss out on what God has in store for us. You know, God wants us to have a life that is fulfilling, a life that has meaning. But because of sin, we have missed out on that. And then second, there is physical death. All of us, we will die, whether by illness, by accident, old age, or even by violence. Death is unavoidable. Physical death, it is unavoidable. But then the worst kind of death of all is eternal death. It means that after we have died physically, we will be consigned to a place for all eternity. A place that is not pleasant at all. A place called hell. Where we will experience the flames that can never be quenched. And so we see here that death it came as a consequence because of our sins. And the thing that we need to recognize is this. All of us, we have missed God's standard. But we didn't just miss it by one, one single sin. You know why? Because we miss it out on numerous sins. In other words, we are sin addicts. All of us, we don't just sin once in our lifetime. We keep on sinning and sinning and sinning. And so we have offended God over and over again. And not only that, did you know that to sin is not accidental? 
in the original language, the word sin, it means to miss the mark as in uh, if you're in an archery course and you're trying to hit the target but you miss. However, that word for sin in the original language means to miss intentionally, to miss deliberately. And so because we have sinned deliberately against God, we are at odds with Him. We have become His enemies. We have deliberately allowed ourselves to enter into that path called death. And so we have this barrier between us and God. And yet the most wonderful thing of all is that God still loves us very much. In John 3.16, a verse that I'm sure many of us are familiar with, it tells us that God loves the world. God loves the people of this world so much that He gave His one and only Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins, so that we who believe in Him would have eternal life. Going back to Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says that God demonstrated His love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It's a wonderful thing to know that Jesus went to the cross on our behalf. You know, He didn't wait for us to get our lives straightened out. Because the reality is we can't. We cannot straighten out our lives. He took the initiative instead to reach out to us. He did everything in order to bring us back to God. All of us, we deserve nothing less than death. But Jesus Christ, the one who has never sinned at all, willingly took our place on the cross. And through His death on the cross, that barrier that separates us from God has been removed. And we can be reconciled to God. We can be made right with God. And we can be accepted once again into His family as being His children. But then there is something that we all must do if you, if you and I, if we truly want to be right with God. And that is we have to turn away from our sins. Because it is our sins that have separated us from God. So we need to turn away from that. And not only that, God is offering us the opportunity to return to Him. And that is by faith. We turn away from our sins. And by faith we turn to God through Jesus Christ. And when we put our faith in Jesus Christ when we trust Him as our Lord, as our Savior, then I tell you, we will find a life that is meaningful in the present. And we will find a life that is beautiful and eternal in the future. God loves you and I very much. Such that when we were still sinners, and maybe for some of us here, we still are, sinners. Jesus already went to the cross for you and I. He did it because He wants to restore us to Him. And so the question that we all must deal with tonight is this. What should I do with this wonderful truth? Because later on, when all the lights are turned on and the concert is over, you could walk out from this place and shrug off everything that you've heard. But I tell you, if you do that, that will be to your detriment. That will be to your loss. Or, you could choose this very evening, before you leave this place, you could say to the Lord Jesus, Lord, I turn away from my sins, and now I want to put my faith in you as my Savior, as my Master. Right now, I'd like us to just take this moment to close our eyes, bow our heads, and to just meditate on this message, on the songs that you've heard, the drama that you've watched. And even as you are meditating on these things, I'd like to invite the LSI singers to 
sing a song entitled Much Too High a Price.
just know that God may be speaking to your hearts right now. You know you are a sinner and that you're far away from Him. And you know that through this evening's program that God loves you. He loves you very much. And He's calling you back to Him. And so are you willing to be reconciled to Him at this very moment? Are you willing to believe in His Son, the Lord Jesus, to let Him save you from your sins and to give you new life, to let Him be the rightful Master of your heart. I now invite everyone to just close your eyes and bow your heads. Let that sink into your hearts right now. And if anyone here is saying, Yes, Lord, I want to believe in Jesus Christ. I want to turn away from my sins and trust Him this very moment. I invite you to raise your hands. Don't be shy. Just raise your hands and I will later on lead you in a prayer. If there's anyone who would like to say right now, Yes, I want to believe in Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I want to turn away from my sins. You can raise your hands to signify that you want to have faith in me. Is there anyone who would like to do that? Is there anyone who would like to pray, that, pray a prayer with me later on? Yes, I see a hand. Okay. Praise God. Anyone else? The Lord may be speaking to you right now. So don't quench His voice. He may be telling you this evening to put your faith in Him. So don't hesitate, but listen to what God is saying to you right now. So is there still anyone who would like to say, Yes, Lord, I want to believe in Jesus Christ. You can raise your hands to signify that you want to have faith in Him. Is there anyone else? Right now, I'd like to lead a prayer. Maybe you did not raise your hands. Maybe you're feeling a bit shy. But the most important thing is that you say in your heart and also express willingly that you want to believe in Jesus Christ. I'm going to lead a prayer. I'm going to read it once. And if this prayer is a prayer that you want to pray from your heart, from your will, then you can do so. The words doesn't matter that much. What is more important is what is coming from your heart. What is your desire? What is your will? And so the prayer goes something like this. Lord God, I admit that I have sinned against you. And I have earned the penalty of death because of my sins. Thank you that you love me very much. That you sent your Son, the Lord Jesus, to come to this world to die on the cross for my sins. I now turn away from my sins and I want to trust in your Son, the Lord Jesus, to be my Savior, to be the giver of new life to Lord Jesus, I invite you to cleanse me of my sins and to give me new life. So if that prayer is something that you want to do this evening, if you hear God's voice right now prompting you to say yes, to believe in Jesus, then why not follow along in this prayer? But the most important thing is that your heart must want it. So let me read through the prayer again. And if it is 
the prayer that you want to make, then just pray silently in your, in your own seats. Again, the prayer goes, Lord God, I admit that I have sinned against you, and I have earned the penalty of death because of my sins. Thank you that you love me very much, that you sent your Son, the Lord Jesus, to come to this world to die on the cross for my sins. I now turn away from my sins, and I want to trust in your Son, the Lord Jesus, to be my Savior, to be the giver of new life to me. Lord Jesus, I invite you to cleanse me of my sins and to give me new life. Amen. Now for those who pray to trust the Lord Jesus this evening, we thank God that you made that decision to believe in Him. And I would like to assure you that if you have truly repented or turned away from your sins and have trusted in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, then you have the new life that He's promising you. Right now, uh, for those who have raised their hands, I don't want you to be shy about this, but I want you to go downstairs with a, with a person who invited you. Because we have some friends downstairs who would like to know you as well, and they would like to explain to you better about this new life that you have in Jesus Christ. So we have some people at the back, and they will escort you together with your friends. Okay, so if uh, you came with your friends, then please uh, bring them downstairs with you, and we will have people who will talk with you, who will get to know you, and introduce to you even more about the new life in Jesus Christ is all about. So thank you and good
and day will be our face to face. Amen. Please be seated. Fellowship for helping us to push through tonight. 
this program. Of course, we want to welcome everyone for those who came tonight to show support for this war. Of course, it would be possible without the presence of our Almighty God to whom all honor and glory be Tonight's program is a special event. We would like to request all the newcomers to please stand to be recognized. We'd like to say welcome to the Before we call it tonight, we invite everyone to join in worshiping the Lord in our worship services tomorrow at 7 a.m. 9 a.m. and 11.15 a.m. Just want also to re-announce that for those who accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior tonight, please go down with your friend or the one who invited you to meet with some of our church friends as well. For those who will be going home tonight by a church van, please direct your eyes to the screen for the available locations where the church will bring you. The church bands will be waiting at the front of the church. But before we go, we want to thank everyone for attending tonight's celebration. Light refreshments are available as we have fellowship together at the social hour. May the Lord bless our night. Good evening, everyone.